Hi everyone, if you're studying for the LOTE, you probably know that the pedagogy instruction and assessment is the largest part of the test. Um, the multiple choice questions are 26.6% of the test. So that means even if you're completely fluent in Spanish, um, you will probably not pass the test if you don't learn the pedagogy. Um, and then an additional 8% is also on pedagogy. It's the lesson plan and the essay on pedagogy, instructional practices they call it. So today, I want to make a quick video to teach you about Stephen Krashen, who's one of the second language acquisition experts, the one you'll probably see the most on the test. And he has a list of six theories or hypotheses um, that are pretty quick and easy to learn. So in just a few minutes, I can outline this and you can learn it. And to learn about all the theorists, um, my course will teach you about all of them. But let's get started with this so you can learn a little bit about Stephen Krashen. So his first theory or hypothesis is the acquisition learning hypothesis. And he says there's a difference between language acquisition and language learning. Language acquisition is how we learn L1. We just naturally acquire it, pick it up from listening to our parents and caretakers. There's not a lot of direct instruction involved or uh, conscious effort to pick up language. It's just naturally acquired. Language learning is more direct instruction, more conscious effort to, to learn a language. He promotes that we use acquisition techniques even when teaching L2. So even for teaching Spanish, we would use acquisition methods, a more natural approach. So that's acquisition learning. There's a difference between acquisition and learning. Next, we have the monitor hypothesis. If you think about a blood pressure monitor, it's telling when your blood pressure is off, right? When it's too high or even too low. A monitor in our brain tells us when something's wrong. So it sounds like a good thing, and it can be, to help you learn language and, and correct your mistakes. But if you use it too much, it takes away from your fluency. So he says to be careful not to overuse that monitor. It's called the monitor hypothesis. Next is the natural order hypothesis. There's a natural order that we learn languages in. This holds true for both L1 and L2. So if you notice little kids talking, learning to talk, little babies, they start with words, and then they start combining uh, a verb and a noun, right? Like, daddy, go. Um, so there's a natural progression so we start with the present tense. Later on, we use the past and the future tenses. If we follow that natural order, that's the best way to teach a language um, or to help people acquire a language. If we follow, if we break that order, we'll cause frustration for both the students and the teacher. This one's probably the most important one, the input hypothesis. He says we need to use a lot of comprehensible input when teaching, which is language they can already understand. And we also need to use I plus one or comprehensible input plus one which is language just above their current level. When we do that, we have to do it with scaffolding, which is extra language support, like nonverbal cues, gestures, body language, rephrasing, checking for understanding and clarifying. So if we use the comprehensible input, language they can already understand, and language just above their level, I plus one, with scaffolding, they'll make a lot of progress in their language development. Next, we have the effective filter. Notice this is effective with an A, filter hypothesis that says we want to create an environment where students feel safe producing language and taking risks, so where their effective filter is low, where they're not afraid to take chances and produce language, so they don't think they'll be made fun of or ridiculed if they make a mistake. So that's called the effective filter. Again, we want that filter to be low. And the last one is just reading hypothesis. The more you read in L2, the more language you'll acquire. So see these six hypotheses, they're not really super complicated, but they are very important to know for the test. So I hope that helped. And to learn more about Noam Chomsky, Levigotsky, Del Himes, and all the other ones, uh, you can enroll in my course at lotespanish.us. And I even have weekly tutoring. So that's what makes me so different than everybody else's. If you enroll in my course in tutoring, you get weekly support from me, and you get the course to help you pass the test.